We are currently tracking all of the data that is coming in from the Hurricane Hunters. That's one of the big reasons why the forecast has come into line this morning. We've had all of this awesome raw data that's going into our computer models, and that raw data is collected by the Hurricane Hunters. Joining us now is Richard Henning. He is NOAA Hurricane Hunter Flight Director, and he's actually returning from his mission. Uh, thank you so much for joining us. We appreciate your time. I know you guys have had a lot of work under your belt this morning. Well, thank you, Britta. I appreciate the opportunity to speak with your audience. Uh, yes, we're on our way home back to our base in Lakeland, Florida. Uh, we're about ready to conclude about an eight-hour mission uh, that we just flew for Hurricane Lee, uh, where we dropped 31 of our drop zones, uh, the instrument packages that fall by parachute, uh, through the storm and then in the environment immediately around the storm. And Richard, talk about how important those drop zones are. Because, you know, when you're looking at computer models, I think many people that are watching this interview, they don't realize how important it is to get good stuff into a computer model. And that's the hard work that you guys are accomplishing. Right. Uh, well, one of the most important sources of weather data are the weather balloons that are launched at hundreds of locations around the world twice a day. And we have dozens of locations around the United States uh, where those weather balloons are launched. And what these drop zones are is they're essentially the, um, the opposite of a weather balloon. Instead of uh, climbing into the air, they fall from the sky by parachute. Uh, from the bottom of our aircraft down to the ocean surface. And there's no way to get uh, this type of information out over the oceans. So not only do we provide what is essentially the equivalent of a weather balloon, but it's a lot more concentrated than the, uh, the United States weather balloon network. We dropped 31 of these drop zones uh, either over the storm or in close proximity to the storm. And that really high uh, degree of density of data going into the models is extremely useful, especially in the track forecast and getting the track of the storm correct. Yeah, the track and intensity, two things that you really have to take on. We just got the latest uh, data drop from one of your drop zones, by the way, 102 miles per hour for that wind gust. And also reporting that the diameter of the eye really starting to expand. Uh, so looking at your eight-hour flight that you've completed this morning, sir, uh, what are you looking for out of Lee over the next 24 hours? Well, it's the thing about uh, Hurricane Lee is that it's continuing to grow in size. And it, it actually kind of reminds me in some ways of uh, Hurricane Sandy, uh, which about 11 years ago, uh, as it moved northward towards the northeastern United States, it grew to be an abnormally large storm. And, and Lee is forecast to do the same thing. So you're talking about hundreds and hundreds of miles of diameter of tropical storm force winds and, and a large radius of hurricane force winds as well. Yeah, the expanding wind field when you're taking a storm from tropical to extra tropical is something to watch very seriously. Thankfully, this storm, a very different path than Sandy. NOAA Hurricane Hunter Flight Director Richard Henning, we appreciate your time and thank you for your service. Uh, have a safe flight back to, to Florida this morning and we'll talk to you soon. Okay, thank you. You have a wonderful day. Take care. Bye-bye. I'm Amy Freeze. Welcome to Fox Weather's YouTube page. We have more great videos on the way, so make sure to subscribe to stay updated on all things weather.